Hi there, welcome to the Teeny Tinker's channel. I make ball jointed doll and craft related content. Following the last month, I've noticed there's a lot of new friends on this channel. Thank you everybody for subscribing. And with a bunch of new friends, often comes a bunch of people who are new to the hobby. So I wanted to do one of my very first, maybe my very first ball jointed doll FAQ video. If you've been in the hobby for a while, you might know some of this, but some of it might be new to you. If you're new here and you're new to the hobby, this will all probably be new to you. In this video, I'm mostly going to focus on BJD Care 101. In the vein of new subscribers to this channel, if you haven't subscribed to this channel and you're watching this video and you're into this, please take a minute now to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It would mean the world to me, helps me, helps the channel, helps everybody, helps the hobby. Okay, let's get into the video. Starting with dressing your BJD. When dressing your BJDs, one thing you really need to watch out for is staining. While resin BJDs don't usually stain as easy as vinyl, for example, it definitely still happens, and it kind of sucks when it happens. To prevent this, choose clothing and wigs with light colors where they touch the doll. For example, you can get dark clothing with white lining. You can also just choose lighter colors as well. If you choose to use dark items for your dolls, I do recommend you change them out of these clothes and into lighter ones at least every week or two. This will help you prevent stains. Topic number two is painting. Another way to care for your doll is by giving them a face up. Many people will send their BJDs off for face ups from artists, but it's not always geographically or financially feasible for somebody. Or you're just like me and you want to keep doing the face ups until you get really good at them. Practice makes progress. However, in the lens of caring for your BJD, I wanted to talk about materials. Some materials are okay, and some can stain or have a chemical reaction with the resin. It's important to know which you can use before you start. In general, I recommend soft brushes and nail art brushes. I don't think there's a brush that can really damage your doll short of maybe iron wool or something, but I thought I would just make a recommendation. However, something you really want to get right is sealant. A good sealant is vital in preventing staining and preserving your face up. I recommend two to three coats before you even start painting. This gives you a good base to work on for sure, but it also prevents the materials from staining the resin. You should have good results with spray-on sealants that are in a flat or matte variant. This will avoid your doll coming out shiny. Also, if you don't want your doll to come out shiny, make sure you're holding the sealant away from the doll and not up too close because this can cause it to get shiny anyways. Some examples of spray sealant that I recommend are Mr. Super Clear, which is my tried and true, or you could try Zuki Mira Finishing Powder Spray. I've never used this one, but I've heard good things. If you're hesitant to use aerosols in sprays, because let's face it, they are quite toxic, you can use liquid matte sealants as well. Ann and Doll has a video on their YouTube channel showing how to use this kind of sealant with a sponge. Check it out here. Pastels work wonderfully as contour, blush, and eyeshadow. Most pan chalk pastels work best. Human makeup is not recommended by most collectors. For paints, watercolor, acrylic, and gouache are all great options. Absolutely avoid oil paints, enamel, or lacquer, which can degrade the sealant and even the resin. However, the biggest point here is that you don't need to only protect your doll. Protect yourself and please use gloves and a respirator if you're using an airbrush or spray sealant. Many of these are very, very toxic and dangerous to breathe in. So now let's talk about taking photos. Taking photos? How is that BJD care? Well, I mean, it's not really, but I wanted to take a moment and just say some little things that I wish I'd known when I first started. BJD photos in the water can be so pretty. However, just because the resin is fine getting wet doesn't mean the elastics and hooks are. Hooks are typically metal and elastic is, well, elastic. If you submerge your doll in water, the hooks may get rusty and the elastic and mold or mildew. It's definitely recommended to unstring your doll to let all elements dry properly before putting them back together. 
Also, don't be afraid to take your dolls outside for cute photos. I recommend overcast days, both for photography and lighting reasons, but also to prevent yellowing, which leads us to our next topic. When I first got into the hobby, I heard about yellowing or mellowing almost right away. And I gotta admit, it was a little scary. These dolls are typically kind of expensive, and the idea that they can be damaged and discolored by the sun can send anyone's alarm bells ringing. Basically, yellowing is the process of a doll's resin changing color due to age and or sunlight. Time and sun can both cause the resin to take on a yellow tint or lose color. Think about when you would leave papers in your car's back window for weeks and weeks and it would get sun bleached. It's kind of like that. It is basically inevitable that some yellowing or mellowing will happen with dolls, but you can slow the process through care and upkeep. The preventative option is to keep the doll in a dark place away from sunlight. Be sure this area doesn't get too hot though, because heat can warp resin. This is especially true if the doll is strung tightly. If you notice the doll has yellowed, you can also sand it evenly all over with a fine grit sandpaper. You can also try a melamine sponge, though this is not going to be as effective for severe yellowing. I don't recommend doing anything too gritty because you don't want to lose the details or leave scratches in your doll. If the yellowing is really bad, or if you're feeling super adventurous, you can dye the doll. My recommendation is Rit Dye More. I actually have a video about this on my channel from a while ago that you can check out if you want to follow along. Another option is to unstring and give your dolls a scrub and OxyClean. Lomi's Playground has a really great video about this that I highly recommend. Check it out here. All right, this leads us to cleaning your BJD. If you're like me and you play with your dolls barehanded, the oils in your skin, dirt, and dust will get on your doll. And it can even get inside the joints and channels. I recommend cleaning your doll at least every couple years as maintenance. While OxyClean can be used to de-yellow to a certain point, I don't recommend it for an everyday clean, especially if you're washing your dolls kind of often. Instead, I recommend unstringing the doll and washing in warm, not hot, water and soap. I like Dr. Bronner's soap myself. Use a straw cleaner for inside the channels if you have one. I also make sure to let the pieces air dry and then give them a wipe with a magic eraser and a microfiber cloth right before restringing. Keep in mind, if your doll has a face up or a body blushing, washing may damage it or break down the sealant. All right, final topic is restringing. BJDs are held together by tension and the use of elastic strings. Stringing can be really finicky. A doll which is strung too tight can snap out of position, be hard to move or pose, or it can even damage the doll. Too loose and your doll is floppy and can't pose at all. <laughs> that rhymed. The sweet spots in the middle. To string your doll, I recommend forceps or hemostats for holding the elastic snugly in place. Upholstery thread and a thick needle or a restringing tool. A strong wooden stick or something like a seven millimeter knitting needle. Ascenva has a fabulous restringing video here you can check out. By the way, this footage is of me restringing two super cute Lunas so that they have each other's joints. One's pink, one's blue, and I've always loved swapping joints on dolls. Just a heads up that these two will be available in my stock sale coming up, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested. All right, but also back to care. Another thing you can do to care for your doll, prevent chips, and also improve their posing is to suede the doll. Some people use leather or actual suede for this, but many opt to use hot glue instead. Essentially, you're just putting hot glue into the joint socket, which creates more friction for the joint without damaging the resin. This helps the doll hold positions. I have a video on my channel which shows how I suede an already strung doll, but you can also do so before stringing. Okay, so that is all the main topics that I'll be covering in this video. If you're listening and you have some BJD care tips that I didn't share, 
please list them down in the comments. I'm sure everybody new here or new to the hobby would be so, so appreciative to see those. I know newbie videos and educational videos aren't everyone's cup of tea, and I don't plan on doing this too often. The regular content of doll making and customizing and all of that will be back next week. Remember, there's a new video every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, so keep an eye out. If you're already subscribed to this channel, thank you so much for subscribing. And if you're new here, I hope you like the content and consider subscribing. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.